Welcome, welcome, Dr. Stephen Hobbs here from the Wealth Movement, sharing a Trees Every Day video with you. And this is for February the 28th, 2021. And today's topic is about the 10 action elements of extraordinary experiences. And what I'm gonna be doing is uh, sharing with you the diagram that's here and being able to give you insights into the 10 elements, which are the numbers that you find here on the diagram. I'm also going to explain why the diagram is created the way it is, because it um, suggests something for you that uh, you might take into consideration for yourself as you start to create extraordinary experiences. I might go so far as to say, co-create or eco-create extraordinary experiences. So to get us started with this, I just want to remind you to subscribe, ring the bell, comment, like, and share so that we can continue our conversation together. Therefore, where I'm going to start is the notion of the word action. And what I'm going to be doing is sharing 10 action verbs with you that are linked to extraordinary experience. So and the elements here are like looking at the periodic table and in their combinations, they give you a sense of the biotic and abiotic uh, world in which we, we live. And I've shared some information about ecosystems and explaining about biotic and abiotic, and um, it will be linked uh, below so that you can go and take a look at that one. Also, the EX2, uh, from an extraordinary experience point of view, I would remind you, I've shared a little bit about the, um, the 10 features or the dramatic, novel, uh, consequential features of extraordinary experiences, and I'll put the link below as well. Now, what's also going to be important here, and I mentioned in my introduction, is that there's the two lines here the two lines that form an arrow and this box in the middle. One of the things that is a very uh, core to what I do from my visual language perspective, and I'm going to be sharing a video on my uh, visual language here in uh, the weeks to come. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. You'll remember these two lines and this arrowhead, if you watched any of the other videos, is really about the path of learning and educating. It's also about the path of extraordinary experiences if we put it in uh, relationship to what we're gonna be chatting about today. So what's happening here is that like, this is a path that is leading into this box area. And if you think of the box area like a climbing wall, if you've ever gone to the gym or uh, you've seen people who are practicing to do rock climbing, they'll use what's called climbing walls. And what's happening is that they're trying to figure out what's the best pathway up that climbing wall to get to the top. And in some, in some cases, like ring the bell or they get off on the top, depending on the climbing wall. But what it does is it gives them an opportunity to learn the, the, uh, the techniques um, to uh, figure out the thinking necessary to be able to move up that climbing wall so that it would uh, simulate what happens when they actually do uh, a climb on a rock face. Um, I've tried climbing walls and I've tried uh, rock faces and um, I've had my own challenges with it. Uh, being a little bit on the taller side, I sometimes would get myself um, out sort of like uh, fully out, fully extended arms and legs, and then attempting to figure out where to move next, or I got myself so cramped up, I couldn't figure out how to move next. So I found that um, the notion of rock climbing and climbing wall wasn't quite for me. Uh, my um, extraordinary experiences were linked to rafting and canoeing rather than thinking about um, climbing walls and rock climbing. Yet I would certainly encourage you to experience it and see what, uh, what happens for you as, as well. But it's part of the metaphor that's here, the, the pathway to the climbing wall or the rock face, and then getting off the top and walking out further 
into, into the future. Where you start might be at A, and then what you're doing is you're getting to B, and there's that time and space that happens for you. And therefore, there are three of these action elements that I associate with the pathway to the climbing wall. Then there's the, the five on the climbing wall, and then the one that goes out. But remember these three and two and one actually carry on up here to nine, and that there is this number 10 that takes everything into consideration. And the diagram is really about how you might, uh, in this sense, create, co-create, eco-create extraordinary experiences using these uh, 10 action verbs. And like I share in most of my videos when I'm talking about these kind of uh, topics, these tools, these techniques, I'm not saying that this is the end all be all. This is a way in which I'm presenting it. And you might find, well, I'd like to switch two and three. Okay, I may wanna switch four and seven. There are different kinds of combinations that would work for you. And that's taking what might be presented here as a best practice. And when you uh, adapt it, it would be more of a wise practice for you. Now, this is born of years and years of doing extraordinary experiences, uh, getting reflections uh, from others through evaluations or my own reflections. And I've created this one. So why don't we dive in and let's take a look at each of these uh, action verbs that are here. And you'll notice number one is the whole idea of encourage. And from an encourage perspective, that's to enter in to the pathway with support and awareness, is that you have your own support or the support of others, yet there's awareness of the path that you're gonna be on. You don't wanna create an experience where people don't have an understanding of where they're going to go, what might be the, um, the possible outcome if they get involved with it. And this is where you get into the world of briefing and debriefing. These are tools that you can use. And I've written about them in articles before and I'll shoot a video and talking about briefing and debriefing uh, because I find that it's very valuable in anything that we do in life. And as grandparents are living and interacting with your grandchildren, this is a, a wonderful way to understand about briefing and debriefing. Again, you can use it in a lot of other aspects of your life where you're creating extraordinary experiences. So the first one is to encourage. And another one is to think about the being mindful of the courage that's necessary to take the steps to enter onto that pathway to engage in that extraordinary experience. And if like rafting, uh, you've never attempted rafting, that could be an extraordinary experience. If you've not done rock climbing, that could be an extraordinary experience. If you haven't had a, a really great time walking in the, in the woods, you could create an extraordinary experience there. If you're attempting to create an extraordinary experience for your grandchildren, then what is the element of encourage got to do with that? That's how you want to look at this as you as you move through this video today. So what we're gonna do is take a look at number two. And number two, all right, is an essential one from the perspective of what energy. In other words, to, <clears throat> to energize your involvement. And energize is about um, the, the, your full expression to, to get into it in a full way and to do so with enthusiasm. So to enthuse your full expression, your involvement in the activity, in the experience, in the extraordinary experience. How can you energize yourself to enter into that? Now, sometimes this is where people might say, well, take a couple of deep breaths before you jump in, all right? Okay, that's one of the ways. Preparation is another way to energize yourself, uh, to be able to have the correct equipment with you that you're going to use to enjoy that extraordinary experience. 
So that's a sense from an energize. And I'll go so far as uh, even simple things like getting a good night's sleep, um, the, the eating correctly. These are elements of energize as well about getting yourself uh, prepared uh, with a prevention mindset just to get yourself ready for that extraordinary uh, experience. And how might you help those who are gonna interact with you energize themselves? Um, there has been um, one time, and it only happened one time, working with a group of people. Uh, so this was in the workplace. And the, the person didn't actually brief them. And I did a bit of an, a, a surprise um, entry into uh, the experience. And the person I asked to set it up from the workplace point of view didn't set it up. Um, they just forgot to share the, the briefing that I had given to that person to share with the group. So they had some sense that they were gonna walk into something. And it um, sort of backfired a little bit on me. And I learned from that lesson is make sure that when I go into it, uh, the people have a sense of the energy to enter into it. It's not always the best to do a complete surprise. Now, I have been involved in some extraordinary experiences in my wilderness remote first aid days. I, I taught it and, and taking courses as well. Um, we actually had to go through an experience at um, one o'clock in the morning and it was a simulated car accident. Uh, we didn't know it was coming and someone came run, running into the bunkhouse and said, there's been a quite a massive car accident. Uh, can we help out? It was just down the road. And it was a, a bit of a shock to the system. And once we got into it, we realized what was taking place. But at the same time, I remember that initial, is this real? Uh, because I've helped out on many accidents, car accidents and um, canoeing accidents over the years. So it's sort of that adrenaline hit, hit me and, um, but it also, in a sense, energized me to enter into it as well. So I'm hoping to, that I'm giving you a few perspectives about energize as well. The next one that we're going to take a look at is number three. And number three, all right, is really about this notion of to engage. So, and so, it is about, okay, if I'm going to enter into this, how am I going to engross myself, to fully immerse myself in the experience, to um, get into it, get in the way forward. In other words, to really engage with what is taking place. And you can think of other words like motivation from the outside in, inspiration from the inside out. There are terms like that that you can use around this engagement. And this is, again, it sort of links to the energize from the perspective of, now let's go back to preparation approach and a prevention mindset. If you're done lots of uh, interacting, taking some smaller steps of engagement, you can do a much longer one. Let me give you an example um, where this uh, became a, quite a learning for me is that I was doing some uh, education-based work, some nature-based education work, and a group of older persons had wanted to learn a little bit more about the outer doors. And um, unfortunately, I didn't think it all the way through in terms of their level of fitness for their engagement. And I sort of... Ex I went a little bit too far and I could tell that they were tired. And when they got tired, they weren't um, engaged quite as much. And I learned from that. They still said they had a great experience, but the, there was this underlying feeling that the level of engagement I asked of them was a little bit too much. So I would probably say from myself is that it wasn't necessarily an extraordinary experience it could have been a remarkable experience for them, but I'm, and I might have missed out just a little bit there for them. So again, it's thinking about uh, this level of engagement and how you uh, help a person and persons um, be able to sort of engross themselves, to get 
right fully into it so that they can get the most out of it. The next one that I'd like to go over is number four. And this one is about to emerge. So how is it that you're going to emerge out of this extraordinary experience? What are you going to take with you from what's happening? Now, emerge is while you're in it, but also at the end of it in terms of what you um, get from the extraordinary experience. So the sense of engagement is you're going to immerse yourself. The notion of I'm going to emerge. I'm going to emerge into the experience. I'm going to emerge into uh, playing with that experience. And if you think about it from a, a rock climbing wall, is that I've got myself to the point that I'm ready to start the climb. So I'm going to emerge into the activity of doing the climb up the climbing wall, the rock face. And it's a decision that I'm sort of going to on from the inside out, and I'm going to get myself involved with this. So that's what I mean by emerge. The next one that I want to take a look at is to take a look at evaluate. Evaluate here there's a couple of ways of looking at it to evaluate as you move through it. And then there's evaluate as a result of it. So when I think of evaluate, what I might do is I'm gonna be reviewing what's taking place so I can figure out of what I'm doing, is it worth my involvement? So if I'm enjoying the extraordinary experience, I will stay in it. If I'm not, what, what might I do to sort of edit my involvement with it? Am I going to add something to that, alter something, delete something from that experience? Might have a conversation with the person who has organized it. But the also the other way to look at evaluate is from a perspective of an assessment is that at the end of it, what was the value? What was the worth to me of my involvement in that? Would I do it again? So if you're thinking about this from a climbing wall point of view is that you're gonna evaluate your experience. And if you're not enjoying what it is that you're doing, you'll probably not do it again, right? And this is the same thing with, uh, let's go back from, uh, let's go to the perspective of the, the grandkids. If, if you push them in terms of their, um, in your encouragement to get them engaged with what's happening and the energizing, but yet they get to a point when they're in it, they don't like it, it's, it's difficult to keep that momentum going. But if they are enjoying themselves with what's happening, then that's another way to move on and to up the ante, go a little bit longer, do something a little bit different. There are ways in which to look at it from an evaluation point of view. The next element, number six, all right, is to give yourself consideration about how you might expand this activity. If it's working for you and you do enjoy it and you want to look at doing it again, how might you expand it? And I sort of think of expand as opening up the possibilities here. If you've actually done the climbing wall, then going out onto the rock climbing, and there are different uh, numbers assigned to uh, the faces that you're climbing. So you'd start at that number that's a little bit lower, sort of like going on the ski hill, and you're going to the green before you go to a, like a, a double diamond black kind of idea. So if you're going to expand it, what you're going to do is, how might I find a way to um, elaborate on how we're going to develop our involvement with it and to get the sense of that flow. Um, I'll come back to uh, canoeing as an example. One of the things we did was we always learned about getting in and out of a canoe from a dock, how to get in and out of a canoe from a sandy beach. And then we said, okay, well then how might we paddle from the dock to a sandy beach, get out, get back in, paddle to the dock, 
we were developing the skills, getting the sense of flow, and then being able to say, okay, well then let's go out into a little bit deeper water and let's just tip the canoe over to get a sense of what that feels like. And it was just a sense of developing, expanding the, the opportunity that's here. Um, I th think of this as from a walking point of view is walking isn't always at the, at the same level. There are ups and downs if you really want to enjoy uh, the walks and to walk from pavement, to walk to uh, gravel, to walk with uh, up a hill, walk down the hill. Uh, how might you expand your walking and the possibilities that are there for you? And to be able to get that sense of flow and how does one thing move to another that moves to another that moves to another. So how might you from walking in the summertime move to walking in the wintertime using snowshoes? Um, there's a basic uh, premise of walking and just using different tools in a different season. But what it does is it brings out a different kind of experience for yourself. And these are the, the notion of expanding the possibility that's there for you. Number seven is about how to extend the extraordinary experience. If you think about it from um, the expansion of, of the opportunities, the extend would be is how do you improve this over time? And let's do walking as an example is that from an extension point of view of this walking is what would happen is if we put a tent in our backpacks, load it up just a little bit more and walked out a certain distance and actually made camp and then walk back the next day. That's what I mean by extension, all right? Let me use that canoeing example as while well. we learned a lot about uh, the canoeing close to shore, close to a dock, we would do that as a way in which to get them ready. What we did was we'd do a, a 10 day um, canoe trip and going out and spending nine nights out in the lakes and having a paddle for quite a distance uh, actually showed them how to do a bit of interacting with white water at a very low level. And th this was for kids that were like uh, 12 years old. And we, they learned the extraordinary experience of what was close and safe. And then we extended it for a longer trip. Uh, again, the possibility here is that uh, you could do RV camping and uh, you go for a weekend, then you go for a week. And what's the difference of the experience for the grandkids by doing that and uh, being able to see different views of the world as they, uh, they move out and extend their involvement in the out of doors with you. So again, this notion of to extend. Number eight, this one's a little bit of a, a difference in that what you're looking for is to find what we call entrainment. From an entrainment point of view, let me use an example of um, the, uh, the counters on the top of uh, pianos. And if you take one and start it and put another one beside it and start it a little bit different, eventually they'll actually get to the point that they're in sync. And what we're doing here from an entrainment point of view is to get in sync with each other, but also in sync with the activity in which you find yourself. Because when you um, energetically, number two, and from an engagement point of view, number three, through your encouragement, then what you're able to do is find a way in which to get them so that they evaluate and they're enjoying what it is that they're doing, the, you're, they're emerging into the activity. Uh, there's a possibility of extension. There is a, a, a pot, possibility of expanding. The, all of these are starting to um, come together to line themselves up. And that's when you know you're in an extraordinary experience, when all these elements start to um, come to a place of, you feel as though that they're lining themselves up there. They're working with one another to be able to get the extraordinary experience. 
if something is out, you might get remarkable. If a few more are out of whack, then you might get memorable or a great um, good. But if you get them all moving together, then you have this sense of entrainment. Number nine, is to evolve. And what's happening here with number nine to evolve is that through your participation in the experience, in other words, to experience it, and you're moving into the experience, what is it that you're gonna get out of that experience for yourself? And this is where you have an opportunity to pull more out of this experience um, that may not have been present. So the notion of walking in the outer doors, what might you learn about yourself? One of the things you might learn is this idea of exhibiting confidence in moving forward. The, the, the kids, the grandkids can get this, oh, I can actually take this walk. I, I can uh, become more confident in my involvement in the outer doors. I can start to appreciate what the outer doors um, has in store for me. Um, it's unfortunate is that from this involvement point of view, I've, I've created experiences for, for young um, persons and their grandparents, uh, or their parents have been involved. And all of a sudden I hit this number nine is they all of a sudden remember, well, woods are dark. That's a little scary. I don't know if I want to go any farther, even though I've attempted to um, take that sort of uh, myth away, they get caught up in something that um, maybe a friend had said, oh yeah, but be ready if you find yourself in a dark place in the outer doors. And it's very unfortunate when that happens. And I attempt to evolve a way of appreciation, all right, uh, rather than let them uh, bring something that might have a bit of fear uh, associated with it. And therefore, how can I help them create this confidence to exhibit this confidence in being able to move forward and, and expanding out and seeing the beauty of, of what is out there? Um, I'm not taking it away from the sense of how do you um, think about it from a safety point of view? That's this notion of these three here is that if you're gonna be encouraged to get in and you're energized and you're engaged, then there is an element of safety that is taken through to make sure that this all interacts in a really great way. You don't just put someone on a climbing wall and say, go for it without some um, preparation. You don't put someone in a canoe push them out into whitewater and say, you'll learn when you're out there, all right? So these elements help you to evolve your appreciation for whatever it is that you're experiencing. Which means that number 10, this is taking care of the dynamic of the whole. You see these lines here? If you've ever seen a, a wagon in a cartoon that's drawn and you're pulling it and you see something like this, it's a suggestion that it's moving. And while it's not actually moving on the page, in your head, you have a sense that it, it's moving and it might be moving from one uh, cartoon square to another cartoon square. That's what it's about. But also um, it's a stylized way of saying, okay, here is a quote sign of something that was said, all right? And that's there as well. So number 10 is the sense of the, the movement that you're going to get involved with, but it also is gonna come from the perspective of what you're gonna do to educate. And I, I shared a, the, um, the 10 uh, types of educating approaches in another video, and I'll put a link to it below, to, to be able to figure out what educating approach is best for the extraordinary experience is important. And you might find 
that there's a certain educating approach to set it up. There's another one in here or two or three. There's another one to pull from this and to be able to work it as a whole. So again, this notion of educating, it's really important and it goes back to that phrase, when you listen, you learn, where you share, you educate. So if you're out there in this extraordinary experience as a grandparent interacting with the grandchildren, then make sure that you're listening so you can learn. What is it that they're sharing with you about their experience? And then where you are, you're going to share so that you educate them about the experience and educate them about entering in, educate them while they're there, educate them about what they pull from it. These are um, elements, these 10 action elements of an extraordinary experience. And I believe that what you're looking for is an extraordinary experience. Moving from good to great, to memorable, to remarkable, to extraordinary. That's what you're looking to do. And maybe you have to start with a memorable one and then get them to extraordinary. Again, it's not like you definitely have to throw them into the most extraordinary experience they've ever had and not have to have done a little bit of prep work to be able to get them there. Again, this notion of the 10 action elements is here to guide you in what it is that you're gonna do so that you can, in a sense, um, as the elder, the grandparent, you can look at what it might mean to mentor, to coach, to instruct, um, to do some training. It allows you to then become a celebrant of the experience. So from a place of, of weaver is how you might be able to bring all of this together so that the, uh, the grandkids can involve themselves in a, in a wider um, range of activities and to be able to interact with others is a great preparation. It's like um, if a child hasn't had a chance to go to camp, but they've never been camping, they've never been in the outer doors, to ask him to go to camp, a summer camp for 10 days, can be a little bit frightening for some of them and they can get homesick because they may not truly understand what's going on. But if you've had the opportunity to take them walking, to hug a tree, uh, to be able to go down to the water, put their feet in, to be able to talk about the outer doors and the different experiences and show them different uh, outdoor experiences and get them involved with some kind of activities. Then if they go to summer camp, you would just explain to them, well, this is the, a way in which you're gonna expand the possibilities, extend your involvement so that you can evolve yourself because of those experiences. That's another way that as a grandparent, you can help out with what's taking place here. So again, I re remind you to um, subscribe, ring the bell, comment, like, and share. Uh, there might be something here that uh, you'd like to a little bit more information about. I will be writing about this and digging a little bit deeper into them, but I just wanted to give you the 10 action elements of extraordinary experience today so that you would have something to frame up what's happening to be able to map out the possibilities, then create the, the sense of the blueprint of what you wanna build, to create the, the landscapes, so you know what you wanna grow and bring them together so that there's a, a real extraordinary experience about this notion of belonging, being and becoming. You have that opportunity with whoever you're going to interact with. And as grandparents, with your grandchildren, then you're able to do so much more to enrich their life, to be able to understand what it means to create their own extraordinary experiences or to create extraordinary experiences for others. And it's sort of like a gift that keeps on giving. So with that, thanks very much and uh, take care.